Now, there are a lot of factors that lead to recovery and particularly success and recovery, but programs that challenge patients, that don't gratify them, that often is the most effective. And that's what we like about Last House Sober Living in Los Angeles. Last House, structured program based on accountability and your actions, living a certain kind of life. Not like those luxury treatment centers that kind of feed the narcissism, entitlement, and selfishness. Last House works to combat the learned helplessness some of these millennials have. Also device dependency. A lot of places uh, shrink from that one. And the codependent family system that needs a lot of help. The community challenges addicts with disciplinary systems that teaches them consequences for their choices and actions. The program isn't easy. In fact, it's quite difficult. It's supposed to be difficult. It's hard work to recover. Their theory is, much like diamonds, recovered addicts are forged under pressure. If you or a loved one is looking for a program that aligns with so many of the characteristics we believe lead to a successful recovery, please have a look at Last House. Learn more, visit thelasthouse.net. Again, that is thelasthouse.net. Visit them today. You are listening to the This Life Podcast with Dr. Drew Pinsky and me, Mike Catherwood. That's right. We're doing it this time. So check it out. Thanks for listening. You live. All right. So welcome, everybody. We appreciate you being here. Uh, thank you for supporting the show. Those of you who are here because of KBC, we appreciate it very, very much. Uh, and we are going to. one of the things we're going to do tonight, amongst other things, is sort of give a little bit of a recreation of Loveline. Emily Morris is here, Sex with Emily. That's right. That's Looking good, about. by the way, always. Looking great. She'll be here in just a second. Uh, I'm going to ask her out here to, uh, and we'd love to be able to kind of interact, ask questions, do it the old-fashioned uh, Love Line esque way. Uh, you all right? Me? Yeah, oh, it was good. Your stand up was good. Living a dream. Okay, good. Um, and, and you know, we were we were sort of Emily and I had dinner together. We were talking about all the things that are bothering us, uh, and there's a lot on our mind. What kind of things are on your guys' mind right now? I mean, is the sexual harassment bugging you? Is it, let's let's stay a little bit away from politics if we can. Uh, but that it's un, it's it's crazy how that's bled into politics. I understand that. I get it. But politics I mean, has become a very almost a social media. You know, like it's a, 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 not a social media. It's become a almost a social medium in that we all because we all have a, a Twitter account. We all yeah. kind of have twenty four hour news cycles. It's become a part of our lives in the same way that the actual politicians has become uh, part of theirs. Oh yes. It also just occurred to me that. Do you know Mike did literally grew up in San Marino, right? Yeah. It, literally. Yeah. And literally would do meth at McMurphy's. And uh, what was the one at the end of the place? The road here? Jake's? Is that what? No, no. The end of the road. The 35er? Oh, th- is there any bars you missed? Is there any- <laughs> no. No. Are you fucking kidding me? So, I could give you a, a, a horrifying story at each and every old school and new school bar in, in right. Pasadena. Like okay. some just, really? You did that? <laughs> and, and and Mike now is how many years sober? Fifteen. Fifteen years sober. So it's a pretty big deal. It's, uh, that is not that is no minor deal, especially given given you went in pretty hard. Yeah, but you know people are always like, yeah, you went so hard and you got you got sober so young. I I think about that all the time. It's a blessing. Yeah. I can I. I had no other choice. Mm-hmm. I was an utter pile of shit with no money, no job, no prospect of any type of any semblance of a a happy or fulfilling life. If I was fifty with a couple dollars in the bank, it might have dragged. Who on. knew how long I would have rode that? Yeah. you know that little. You would have been one of the guys you used to get drugs from. No, I if I listen. Here's the thing: blow if you have some money, and and you know weed. Oftentimes, before it became legal uh, everywhere. Um, you, you can you can surround yourself with some not so unsavory people when you're dealing with meth. It's all, you go. I wasn't there wasn't people like me. Yeah, it was like like neo Nazis and well, fucking if you, if you would mind, Uber me. Jack dudes. I, I don't know if you've told this story in this stage. Vampire before, tattoos. But the guy with the cat. Let's tell oh, a story. Real quick. Yeah. yeah, tell a story real quick. So uh, <laughs> this is like an episode of Breaking Bad. What he's about to tell you. I, well, I kid you not. You know, it's not. It's, I, I, I imagine those Mexican guys dragging themselves without their legs through the desert. That's. that's I would have. I would have killed to see those guys because what I was exposed to was way worse. Yeah, there we go. Um, well, my friend and I were going to hook up, but with the guy we were going to get meth from, he wasn't available, so he was going to give us the number to the guy he got it from. It turns out he's way out in Apple Valley, but we didn't give a shit. So we drive to Apple Valley, and we get there. And it is like out of Breaking Bad. It's like this shack in the middle of the high desert, and there's this like tumbleweeds and shit. And there's one giant jacked dude in a wife beater. And we're like, this has to be the place. And I mean, 
fucking diesel. And he's just like, who, who, who are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm Mike. And, my friend. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, we're, we're here to see Vamp, you know? And we just know his name's Vamp. We don't know. It's, it's, like, it's like a gang nickname or some shit. Yeah. So the guy goes inside, and out comes this 11-foot-tall, skinny-as-a-rail, super-white, vampire-looking dude. Hence the name Vamp. Vampire. Yes, th- th- thanks, George. Vampire. Thanks, Drew. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case Medical anybody... school paying off. Well done. So we go into this guy's shithole, and we sit down at a table. So, you know, my friend's here, and he's way more manly than I am. I was fucking already so scared, shivering and shit, and... <laughs> Vamp goes in, and it, it, we were in the kitchen, and it was in complete disarray. I mean, just shit all over the place. What? Money food. Yeah. Give a tidy household. I'm well, shocked. no, it, it's kind of crazy because, like, I used to clean up like like a madman, and same with all most of my friends. You we do be, until it goes the other way, right? Right. Yeah, and then you start taking apart the televisions. And Frankly, I don't know if this guy even smoked meth. He was just making it uh, and selling it. So uh, uh, his physique, <laughs> let, his think? physique, led me to believe that he did. Anyway. Yeah. So he's sitting across the table for us. He's just like, so you, you, you guys know blah, blah, blah. And we're like, yeah, I know. I mean, he gave us your number. And we're talking and chit-chatting. He's like, how much do you want? And we're getting going. So I'm starting to relax, relax a little bit. And over in the corner over here is a cat. And it is eating out of a, one of those like personal bags of Chips Ahoy. They come, you get them at like... like Little like bag. Price Club or Costco where it's like a bunch of little bags you yeah. would buy, you know? And one of them's half open and the cat's fucking eating it, right? And we're sitting there and from out under the table he goes, boom! And shoots the fucking cat <laughs> with a gun. A, a fucking firearm that he had underneath the table. And I don't know if you've ever heard a gunshot go off <laughs> indoors, especially when you don't know it's coming. It was Fucking terrifying, and all of my all of my defenses, all of the posturing I was trying to create to make myself seem not like the biggest pussy on the planet goes right out the door. <laughs> and my friends, I can't kick back, man. Kick back. Don't you laugh? We're gonna die. And I, and I fucking bought meth and drove home. I get I get back in the car. Back in the car, I remember this guy had a... <laughs> my friend had a 90s Volvo, but it was manual. I don't know where the fuck he got this weird car. And so he's driving... And we got back in, and I looked over, and, uh, and I was like, what the fuck is going on? And he's like, yeah, but that looked like really good shit. I was like, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> and that's it. It's the end of it. That was the oh, end of it. Crazy. If that happened to me now, it would be the end of my life. I'd have yeah. to go see therapy every day. I said, when you're in your disease, it's like... Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, you're right, good point. Yeah, I was like, yeah, it looked classy. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, the Volvo reminds me of Adam Grohl's story about his buddy, who uh, his barber, who sold his Bobo for a Sav. <laughs> a Jew? No. <laughs> I sell my Bobo. I thought I have to sell my Bobo for a Sav. And Adam's like, you can make both sounds, but say I, Volvo. I have the Bobo. conversations with my grandmother. <laughs> like, how on earth? <laughs> How on earth can you say, like, I can't think of words that she says with a J, but like, like she'll ha- like, how can you? Okay, she says Yamba juice. I'm like, how is Jamba Yamba, but juice is juice? How the fuck is that even? Yeah, me, I'm going to Yamba juice. And I said, how can it be Yamba juice? It doesn't. It's not even fucking realistic. If, I mean, it'd be consistent. Next, we're going to bring up our friend Emily Morris from Sex with Emily. He spent years with us on Love Line. Emily Morris, come on up here. Look at you, Nelly Furtado looking motherfucker. <laughs> Welcome, Emily Hi, Morris. Everyone. Remember, remember Emily? Yes, yeah, this gentleman is a very big fan of yours. He's Hi. extremely excited to see you. Oh, especially you, my dear. Um, and so, for those of you that maybe don't know, we did Love Life. You did it for like seven years, right? Yeah, something and like that. You were there how many four, years? Three, four, four years. And so, uh, visited once a week. Yeah, once a week. Emily would come, or you know, if we get her there more, we'd have her there more, and uh, we'd answer the questions over these years. And it, it was the pre-harassment days, right? The, the naive days of the past. Yeah, and like pre-three months ago. I, I know, <laughs> uh, right? 
Is that, that's the craziest shit ever. Yeah. We were talking about how there's this controversy now with Time Magazine. Who's going to be the person of the year? And I was like, it's not open for debate. It's Harvey Weinstein. And I'm being dead serious. How I mean, in, in 50 years, all we're going to do is look back at 2017. It's like, Trump's crazy. Oh, yeah. Remember when Harvey Weinstein changed the whole world? Well, like he, he's, he's going to be like a sort of a, 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 a moniker. It's going to be like, well, that's the Harvey Weinstein of fill in the blank. You yeah. Know, if, every time something bad happens to somebody. Well, yeah, he, he's going to become the Michael Jordan of, yes. of rapey shit. Yes. You know, like Because everyone always says, oh, he's the Michael Jordan of. <laughs> yeah, right. All the, you know, like, oh, there's been great athletes. I don't know. He's the Michael Jordan. Of, he's going to be the Michael Jordan of perversion. But Emily's been obsessed with it, she said. I'm obsessed. Well, it's beyond Michael Jordan. I mean, it's, it's a movement. Like, I don't think we've seen anything anything like this. And in, in, I don't remember. Like, it's not even a war. My problem is that it's not even about sex. I think, like, sex is being maligned. It's not really about sex. It's about power struggles between men and women. So I, I feel like. Well, it is about anyone, sex in one way. Oh, in that, no, no. In, Somebody's in, having an orgasm. And by that, I mean the cum. But no, it's about sex in that it's mostly being perpetrated by guys who couldn't get it until they were rich the, and powerful. Exactly. So, okay. Well, that, so but that's Mike's. Wait, hold that, that that that's is Mike's, one theory. That's his one theoretical construct. For it's the whole all the guys thing. in high school they couldn't get laid, and they're like, now I can get laid. Harvey oh, Weinstein my. couldn't smell the gene until he was fucking Harvey Weinstein. And we you know what I'm saying? That never actually got that. Listen, my point is, is that there's a reason why all of these allegations are coming out of Hollywood production and they're coming out of uh, politics and guys who run Fox News. You don't see any rock stars, rappers, DJs, NFL football players, all the most macho, fucking testosterone-driven places. You know why? Because those guys have been banging it out since they were 14 years old. And they have no need to just... Oh, oh, did, I, did I just rub my dick up against you? I'm sorry, honey. Oh, jeez. What was I thinking? Oh, you want to watch a porn with me in my office? I've got a secret fucking rape lock button underneath my desk. I think it's going to be a little more pervasive than Mike does. Absolutely. What, I mean, it's a matter of time. Go away? Like, you think it's just, yeah. No. What? I don't think it's going to go away. My point is, though, is that all the shit we hear about, it's not this, this normal kind of run-of-the-mill, I find said woman attractive, I'm going to try to hit her. It's all this strange stuff that guys like Dr. Drew and I sit back and go, really? You just you, you you beat off into a potted plant. Huh? Like that's two, really right. and that's because there's two guys. But there's, a, there's as a woman, you guys can probably relate this. Don't you know the guys who are like that and the guys who aren't? Like you've been in those situations. You're like he would never do that. Like and so I was thinking about coming up working with both of you. You never never sex. Drew has no allegations. You I'm surprised you don't. But <laughs> just because of the way you talk, but you're so open about it that you couldn't. You say that, and it's true. I mean, I obviously no, really, by, like I, by the way I talk, I mean it makes perfect sense. No, I know you but think you is, be, but the reality is, the reality is, is like I can't. I could say you know dirty words, and I could talk about these wild, fantastic sexual situations. I can't imagine rubbing up against no, or touching There's a woman, those guys, right. like, pleasing myself in front of a woman without her. I mean, it doesn't even compute. In, in fact, I'm the horniest guy ever. I love ladies. I love and I. At well, that's point, the difference. About There's men who actually have respect you. for women, but, right? And then you're like, yeah, you do, but, even with all your talk. Like, you do. I also, At think, the end that, of the day, I also think that a lot of this behavior reminds me of when I was in seventh grade. I mean, I go, like, oh, this dude rubbed his dick up against a girl and pretended like he... And I go, this is exactly the shit I do. I'd be like, oops, I dropped something and, like, put my shoulder into a booby. And I was like, I was... 13! There's a big fucking difference. And then eventually you go, wow, that probably made that girl feel terrible. Yeah. I don't think I should do that anymore. I could see that that didn't work out very well for well, it's, both it's, of us. It's that step that I think a lot of these guys didn't make. So it's really the... Hold on. It's the ability to be empathic and to be insightful and take right. the point of view of another person. And in a weird way, a lot of this is a washout of narcissism. Right? Let's talk about I, the narcissism. Yeah, so I wrote a book about narcissism about 10 years ago or so. And uh, bear with me here because this is kind of a little, little bit on the heavy side. But I, was, I could tell it was coming. I could see it. We on Loveline. We were talking about nothing but childhood trauma. Kaiser finally published their study on adverse childhood experiences and realized, oh, my God, most of our parents have had, most of our patients have had uh, adverse childhood experiences, sexual abuse, physical abuse, neglect, that kind of thing, which is what creates narcissism. And narcissism have been given a been given a pass for a long time. It's been a very almost a narcissistic society we've been in. And one of the things that happens uh, from narcissism is you lose the ability to empathize with other people. 
The other thing that happens if you're a trauma survivor is you can get caught up in crowds and mobs pretty easily. And whatever sort of remnant parts of you that are still feeling hurt and uh, aggressed against. Does that include cults? Like, would you be more cults susceptible a little different. to... No, nah, cults are a little di- of a different phenomenon. No, okay. a little different. That, that's really looking for a family, you know, per se. This is, this is I have these cut-off feelings that get swept into things. And so a lot of what you see on social media is this mob action of people that are looking at one person that they've elevated. Now we're going to chop their head off. I, I put a chapter in my book, I wanted to put a chapter on pre-revolutionary France because I said that's the only period of history other than maybe the certain part of British history during the Glorious Revolution and sort of how Aztecs raised kids, they traumatized the oh, shit out of them. Aztecs I, and I shit. Know, it's all coming through you. <laughs> and, and, Fucking and, Aztecs, dog. No? <laughs> uh, and I predicted that the guillotines would come out and here they are. And the problem with the guillotine is whoever is putting somebody up on the guillotine is the next person to go on the guillotine. Right, so we're, and, we're getting rid of all the narcissists right now, like well, survival of the fittest, that's they're right not now. the narcissism. They're all going to be... That's sort of what's happening right now. But have their heads chopped off. It, well, with Harvey Weinstein and, and Kevin Spacey and certain guys, like it's justified and I'm sure satisfying to women all over the world. Well, I'm not, not so much Kevin Spacey, but you know, there's these guys like Harvey Weinstein, and and, and that, that are representative of shit that you ladies of all ages, of all backgrounds, have probably seen and endured. And you go, well, now's the time. The tide is turning. I'm glad. Let's go. Let's get this out in front of the world, and let's move in a better direction. But unfortunately, in this tidal wave of good, inevitably there's going to be a couple people who can't swim too well, and they get caught up in that shit, like George Takei. <laughs> you know, or, yeah. or it's just like, what are we doing? Uh, you know, oh, the I guy. Where we spent time, though, the few people maybe like George K. One thing thirty years ago, I think the fact that it is a movement and there are oh, these guys are apologizing, like they're not saying like I didn't do it, like I'm sorry, I've done. Yeah, it. that I've is the it. craziest shit. I mean, like at least you know, I, I and I, you know, I'm biased because out of all man. these guys, uh, <laughs> because I'm a guy. No, I'm biased because out of all these allegations, the one where I, I was a fan of the person's work was Louis C.K. Right. And so I am biased in that regard that I, but I, I think it does say something that immediately is like, this is true. And I, I'm sorry, I hurt people and I hope people can forgive me. There's a lot of value to kind of mea culpa and this weird dissonance between Harvey Weinstein and the rest of the world is something that's even as scary to me as the stuff that he's done. You know, the fact that he doesn't acknowledge anything that he's done and it's indignant about it. Yeah. Like, Oh, this witch hunt will it'll eventually end and I'll get back to work. And it's like, well, that's true Dude. narcissism. That's real bona fide narcissism. But when you're saying the narcissists are all traveling in these groups, is it more like they're around their, their yes people who are like, they, they've built systems yep. so they can survive. And then these are the people yep. who are, he's built his company around people saying like, you know, it's okay. We're going to cover up for you. Just like human resources and all these companies. So they're not, but now they're being taken down. So I was just wondering what we're going to, if we, if we, the narcissists are gone, like what kind of rise of traits are we going to see now that are going to be more uh, interesting healthy. as leaders? Hopefully healthy. We'll see. But that's my thing. Like, I don't think that we learn. It's all about emotional regulation, not sex. It's about guys who maybe were upset because they couldn't get laid in high school or didn't get loved enough by their mother and didn't know how to regulate, nurture themselves and make themselves feel good. So they take it out on, you know, right? So it's it's a, it comes just, it's out not, with wanting women or even with the Louis C.K. thing. But it's not just, it's not just didn't get laid in high school it's a skill and it only comes from it's just like it look it's just like bullying where i you know to one extent or another we've all had that experience and hopefully it was in grammar school not in college or something where you did something to make yourself feel good in front of the crowd and you looked at the kid on the receiving end and you're like oh fuck I just I just shattered that kid, and you feel bad, and then you grow, and you're like, what? You know what? I'm a human being. I'm not gonna fucking do that anymore. And I I had that ability. I was lucky enough to have that ability to do that with women, where I was like, like I'm really horny. All I care about is getting laid. I'm gonna try tactic A, B, C, and then you go down the list, and you're like, whoa, 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 this isn't working. Uh, even if I succeed at getting at getting the sex, this makes me feel empty. I'm sure it makes her feel empty. There's this whole it, – it, you develop a skill. It's like anyone can get a little bit overweight and then get back in shape. But in order to, to like really become a high-level athlete, it takes years of practice. And, and a lot of these guys were not afforded the years of practice of getting shot down, of, of looking in a girl's eyes when they've done that dick move. And, and all these dudes who are fat fucking slobs – and, and giant assholes on top of it, they get to be 50, and then they're the biggest producer in Hollywood and multimillionaires. And the same shit happened. You, you don't, Tiger Woods 
wouldn't have happened if he was an NBA player. You, you don't see that kind of shit. You know why? Because he grew up in country clubs and in, in this kind of sheltered world where he was never exposed to gigantic fake breasts and girls that wanted to blow him because he was rich. <laughs> and every NBA star has been dealing with that for f- fucking 15 years before he gets his first crack at the NBA. And Tiger Woods is now, he goes from guy on, you know, on the Stanford golf team to every Waffle House waitress wants to fucking gangbang me right now, and I have more money than God. It, it happened like that. It wasn't as if there was this, uh, uh, this, this buffer zone for him to... And that is playing out with all these guys. You know, like, Adam Levine is not fucking sexually harassing people. Because he's been fucking getting it in since he was in, like, a, a zygote. I still think you're going to hear from some of these populations. But I, I want to hear from you guys before we... Before we go too far down this rabbit hole. Gary, do we need a separate mic or am I going to walk the mic around? What do you say, voice of God? You guys can uh, just shout it out to Drew and then one of you on stage repeat it into the mic for the podcast listeners. All right. It's too bad your wife's here because you could use your dick. It just like it's one of those, <laughs> one of those like cool cleaning things, you know, where you're like, Aah! it's like Stretch Armstrong, people. It's that impressive. I'm serious. He could just hit the other side of the room. He might just blast through the wall like the laser and real genius. They're like, oh, fuck, it went through the courtyard. Did you see that? Ah! They think you're funny. <laughs> so questions, interaction, what he comments. Let's hear from you guys. Oh, way over there. The funny thing is, is Drew's wife's in the back of the room going, yeah, it's Drew. Yeah. <laughs> we should call her up here. So what's, what's up? Should I get the HPV vaccination after three years old? Yes. HPV vaccine. After 30, though, it's a good question. That's a good, good question. question. It's, go ahead. She's a physician also. Oh, she disagree with me? But here, here's the deal. So the, so the question was, should you get the HPV vaccine after the age of 30? And the uh, company that uh, got the HPV through the FDA did it only up to age 28 for men uh, because that's the age in which it's most likely to be a significant issue, most likely to work. And it's extremely expensive to have gone into the, the higher age groups. And so a lot of the infectious disease doctors that I've spoken to say, look, if you're sexually active, there's a possibility of exposure. Why not? There's really very little evidence that it, there's any harm done and there might be significant benefits. So uh, b- playing by the book, you might have difficulty p- finding somebody to give it to you after the age of 28 because uh, per the FDA, you know, that's the age where you're, where you're supposed to be, you know, 9 to 28. But What if um, you're married? 26, 9 to 26, you're right. Uh, what if you're married? Yeah, like, why, why, why not just give it to each other? I mean, it, it, it's relatively innocuous, right? You know, I, I mean, am I might... The, the virus that are covered by the vaccine are the ones associated with cervical cancer. Oh, and anal mind. cancer, and anal cancer. I take that back. Neck cancer, and that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> anal cancer? Who? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when Farrah Fawcett died of anal cancer, that's what she died of. I was Fuck. bothered that there was no conversations about HPV, no well, conversations about Well, I, I think that's because for, of her celebrity. People don't want to say, remember no. that big, beautiful celebrity? Yeah, butt cancer. No, she went, she went on this campaign. If you remember, she had that two-part series of, I want to educate people about this, and she did nothing. Educated and nobody about anything except a scam in Germany that she went to to cure her cancer, and of course, that worked great. So. Anal sex was the... Um the number one sex trend in the last 20 years. I just want you to know, hands, hands down, nobody talked about sex, anal sex 20 years ago, and it just came out that that is the biggest difference with sexual practices. Just telling you. Michael <laughs> likes anal, you like anal. I don't know, I, mean, I think I, it's interesting. I like it, but it's not like, it's, it's But it was weird like, that's that... it. They're like, nothing touches anal. Because no, 20 years ago, think about it, nobody talked about anal. Like, it wasn't a thing. And then porn, well, yeah, and now I, I, it was I get a some thing. gay guys down here to disagree with you. <laughs> People were saying, like, let's, did you have it? let's have anal instead of inner horses. Let's go right. the back no, door no, instead no, of the no. front door, which is so stupid. Go through the front door first. Like, you know, people want to, they don't want to protect the That's car. a bold move. You know who, Farrah they Abraham, do it all the team mom? She's the she, only porn I've ever seen where they let off with anal. It was, yeah, they're it like, was, forget no that. No oral or anything. She's do, like, come on, seriously, like a, let's go. Oh, wow. Cool. Talk about no plot yeah. in the porn. Right? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> So, I'm so proud of yourself. So, yeah, well, that's, you know, my, that's my autobiography's lead off, lead off with anal. <laughs> you know Always. how uh, they love anal. Matt Lauer got in trouble for having a closet full of sex toys because uh, Dr. Laura Berman brought him sex toys. Yeah, right. Emma, per- Emily brought me 
so, so many sex toys and yeah. lube and a horsetail butt plug. That and was I had to get that FedExed. <laughs> real horse hair. Wait a minute. Was, uh, I tried to have a horsetail really? butt plug tug of war with Jason Ellis, and and uh, he, he he wimped out. I was Probably really still could. Yeah, it's I a good idea. You can find, it is a good idea. Mm. It's strong. No, I. Do you remember how that happened? How, how the whole Which, butt plug horsetail came into being? I can't believe we're having this conversation on a stage in Pasadena. Because there was one person that made this special butt club, but I don't, butt plug. No, I was talking about. I'd always use. Uh, we used <laughs> to talk to occasionally. I love like these S and M sort of um, dominatrix. Dominatrix, right. yeah. And this one group came in, and they had like a Cinderella's carriage, and a guy would become a horse and pull these women in a carriage right. around a paddock. And I was like, what the? I don't understand this. This is too much for my weak brain. Role playing. And Mike announced, get me a, get me a horse out butt plug. I'll be that guy. <laughs> well, yeah. That hurts. Is that yeah. pretty it's much a majestic, how it a majestic animal. Sort of how it happened, right? He wouldn't, he wouldn't have a big like hat with a plume on it. Yeah. 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 It's it was awesome. crystal. It's crystal. I, was, I, had a, I had a bit, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. That's a, well... Okay, but the difference is the difference is that is Matt Lauer then tried to like one. like that's no, but he also tried to like use them on coworkers. We don't know that for sure. Do we know? Well, that's some of the claims is that he'd be like, "I've got a closet of dildos. I'd love to <laughs> try them <laughs> out on you, that. Sally." It's funny. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think they had any evidence to that. I think someone saw it. Like Meredith Vieira was like, "Oh, I saw sex toys in your office," and like mentioned on the air. Do you? But do you, I, I was thinking about. I was doing stand up like a couple weeks ago, and there was this really attractive female stand up, and I was <laughs> thinking about how. I, I didn't even recognize it at the time, but I was in, very intimidated by her because she was very funny and clever and sharp. And mm-hmm. I thought, wow, I hope that doesn't backfire for her in her dating life, you know? Mm-hmm. Because you're Miss Sex, do you find that there's guys that have this assumption that you're going to be this otherworldly sexual being and it <laughs> negatively impacts your, your, your personal See, life? I don't know. Probably. I mean, the thing is, I don't think the guys are going to make it to the door that I kind of can tell that they're already thinking, like, what, what sex that was going to be like. They assume yeah. I'm, like, swimming from the rock or, you right. know, doing all this crazy stuff. I don't know. Sometimes. But no, that's not who I am. But I think that men have the problem with it because they're like, what do you mean? I am a sex expert. I am a man. I know everything. And here's a woman who knows, apparently knows so much more than I do. So it's confusing, I think, men are like, if they'd want to sleep with me because they think... She's going to teach me something or whatever. Like, who's the, the fucking problem? douchebag that really thinks that? Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. I, I'm and surprised. The men, the men that are not you, like the Harvey Weinstein. No, Boys no. Are, I'm right? looking around the, and I bet you all these guys, you're like, yeah, I mean, I feel like I could get the job done, but I'm not Mr. Sex. <laughs> I'm not the world's greatest lover. It makes nor me, would I ever out loud say that. It makes what me, a fucking douchebag. But douche I think bag. that there's men who. It makes me like, wonder about your picker. Like who you're picking. Oh, my picker's broken? Maybe. Yeah. Well, if you're no, I'm telling guys you, that, I don't pick those guys. What I'm telling you is. That's that's an archetype of one of these men that I could be thinking, like, oh, I'm supposed to be the expert. She she's the expert. I want to be with her just because I could figure out if she knows more or less than I do. I'm not saying those are the guys that I'm, I'm not with. No, them. no, no. Those and I didn't see you that. My point is, is that like it is that crazy. If a guy, not joking, says to the world, "I'm Mr. Lover. I'm the lover man. I please women, and they all have many many orgasms I think every a time." Lot I of men did. think that. No. I hope for the best. That's my fucking take on it. It's like, I really hope I'm going to try my best. Lover, but they like to, I know most guys think that every woman is in it. It's weird because I know women fake it, but not with me. Like, every woman has an orgasm every single time. I want to make... There's men who believe. I want to make a ser- like a subgenre of porn that's called realism, mm-hmm. where the guy comes in like 30 seconds, <laughs> and, and his penis is normal size, and then he has to like explain it away... <laughs> And then he goes down on her for 20 minutes so he can muster up a boner. They, you know, seriously, like there should be some more real... Because li- there is something kind of crazy on both ends. No woman like really wants guys to like just gather around and spit in her face and pretend she's her stepmother. Like they should have like the, the like, fuck, I, had a, I a really, had a really tough day at work. Oh, I'm sure some do, but... I would like there if there's porn where like the woman's like getting home from work too, and the guy's like, "I tried, I, I pitched you a bath, but it's all fucked up." And then they go to fuck, and he shoots real quick, and he's like, "No, I could do it again, I swear." <laughs> Give me a minute. Like, you know the whole thing. Like, do Do you think that some of the pornography has adversely affected the harassment, the tendency towards harassing women? Because there's all this concern that it affects how women are treated. 
Absolutely. I mean, I think it's had so many... I mean, do I think it's had an impact on the sexual harassment? I mean, I think sex is more top of mind and we're having a lot more, like, our sex lives are just suffering because of it. And I think Because of younger, porn. Because of, there's more porn. Yeah. I mean, we were like, I'd rather not have sex or I'm not going to have sex with my partner because I have porn, but I might take it out on some woman I meet out on the street, but I'm just going to keep... Yeah, I mean, and, and then the young people who have only, the only sex they've ever had, like young people, is the only sex they've ever seen is the sex in porn, and then they assume that's how they're supposed to be having sex, and I mean, but... Yeah, do I, I, I always used to say on Loveline that learning to have sex by watching porn is like learning to box by watching Rocky. It's like right. a terrible idea, you know? Yeah. It's terrible. Just, it's I mean, a Hollywood representation of what, you know, like, right, the first time you go and get punched, actually punched in the face, you're like, wait a second, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> This not is not I at all how I'd look on screen. <laughs> I mean, Other, I, yeah, I mean, Other, I just know it's impacting sex because a lot of people I talk to are like, why is it every time I have sex with this woman, for example, I've heard from guys, they're like, she is making these noises like a porn star and she's saying all these things. It doesn't even seem authentic to them because that's what they're, they're mimicking. What yeah, they, what they say. but also, I would imagine there's this assumption that to be a good lover, a man has to act like that. You know what I'm saying? Yes, like, yes. And so there's a 19-year-old guy out there who's like, sure. oh, I'm dropping loads. <laughs> yeah, you fuck you like that. And he's like, or, what? Or, feel, right. or feeling diminished if he's not that. Other, other questions? Yes. Wait, wait, hold a second. You've got, we're right here. I was going to get you a mic. Why, why is it when it's Hollywood, sexual abuse, like it's, it's uh, water cooler talk, everybody's talking about it, but when it's children, that happens like 10,000 times over, everybody's quiet, nobody wants it. It's, it's like such a taboo. When children are sexually abused, yeah. so, nobody talks about it. so when women when women are harassed, we talk about it. when children are sexually abused, we just we clam up. That's an interesting question. Everything's too intense. When it's, it's yeah, that's what I think too. It's, it's just like, so, like like so. you know the I'm whole. Like, I will tell you that there's a corollary to that, which is for. I, I swear to God, this used to drive me crazy. I used to hear about childhood sexual abuse through the 80s and 90s, and I heard childhood child sexual abuse, and I was talking, talking, and everyone would go, oh, 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 no, 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 it's been around forever. You're just talking about it now. No, we went through an epidemic. Did you see that kid that was arrested, was it in Riverside last weekend, that admitted to having uh, sex with 50 children? I'm here to tell you that is not unusual. When people are that way, when they're a perpetrator, they do that to lots of people, many times hundreds. And it is something we should be talking about because it's something we should be aware of. But, But I don't know, it doesn't have the same gratification the talking about sexual harassment yeah no well those? here uh, from look like, like, as from when, the parents feel bad they did something they harm well but but the, you could do obviously. something with the harasser like okay we got to get them well and also the the entire topic itself it's not that even that it's taboo it's that we all kind of collectively agree it's too much too intense i mean look yeah. We, I but, love I, but dis- I agree. Discovery ID, right? You want anyone, everybody watches those Discovery ID or forensic about, files. He's on talking it. about murder porn, right? Yeah, a thirty-five-year-old person gets murdered. You're like, fucking, oh, I want to see this. Yeah, let me get. It. As soon as it's like, and then the the, the child was the body was found. You're like, wait, a second, come on, what are we doing here? I, I, I'll never forget. I, Matt Money Smith, who used to do uh, sports for Kevin and Bean, he done now hosts PMS with Petros. Uh, really talented, really smart guy. Uh, this is probably twelve years ago. Um, I went to see Mystic River, the movie Mystic River, with Sean Penn and uh, a bunch of you know, really talented actors. And I come back to Kevin and Bean the next uh, Monday, following Monday, and I go, Matt, you got to go see Mystic River. The like, I can't go see that. I was like, why? Why? He's like, ah, oh, that it's got a young daughter getting murdered. I'm not going to go watch that. It's, it's just uh, there's no way I could sit through it. And I was like, shut the fuck up. It's a movie. What do you mean? Fast forward to now, and I'm like, oh, I totally get it. I'm not going to go watch some movie where some guy's daughter gets murdered and she's in a ditch and shit. You, now, I'll watch Rambo because, you know, light up 50 Burmese right. people but, in fucking Napalm. No, but the point is you, you have a daughter now. That's, you can relate just, to that. It, no, it's just children. Yeah. It's just something about children. When it's children, you're just like, wait, what's hey, going speaking on? Speaking of, did anybody see that Netflix series Voyeur? Yeah. Oh, my God. Were you as bothered by that as I was? Gay Talese needs to be fucking arrested. <laughs> Is any, am I am I right? Am I? It's it's about this guy that oh, you, you did you tell me about it? You did. I think yeah. I did. Yes. Yeah. Do you, you want to, to paraphrase? It was no. This guy that owned a motel in the '60s. He built it so he could walk around in the attic and look down and spy on every single room. Yeah. Like and he specifically built it for that. Yeah. You know? He it built like it his, for that, and he kept meticulous records of everything he saw for four, 20, 30 years. 
in doing research. And in 1969, Gay Talese joined him looking at people and went, oh, what an interesting subject for a story this would be. And then he waited, Gay Talese waited until the statute of limitation had wore, run, worn out to go publish his fucking book. Yeah, it, I think they should research my fucking foot kicking their dick off. <laughs> but I mean, flying you, away like a Red Bull can. I, I was so troubled by this. I'm still yeah, very troubled I, by it. It's almost like... Uh, it's almost like Roman Polanski or something. something uh, no, that's a bad example. Like Charles Manson, the, the recent, with his passing, there's been a lot of talk about Charles Manson. It's almost outside of my pay grade. Like that level of illness, I go, yeah, no, I don't no. even know what I'm looking at. That but is so I, look, fucked he, up. He is you know? way out sociopath, sick dude. What's wrong with Gay Talese? Yeah. What's yeah. wrong with didn't, didn't immediately well, call dude, the police? Well, dude, it's the same thing. I mean, you know, you see it without it. It's like just magically... The girl who has the alcoholic father can just, without even talking to the guy, she goes and she's attracted to the dude who's an alcoholic in, yeah. in the bar. It just, yeah. it's, it's fucking magic. And we just didn't know that this guy was also equally as fucked up. Right. And he just, he's like, whoa, this seems interesting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they well, just, now there's it's, this weird kismet thing, you know? Now it's obvious. Um, I always, and I, you know, I don't know how to say this without, like, having the FBI waiting for me. Uh-oh. But I, I never... I, I count my blessings almost daily, but I never understood how someone like myself, who is a victim of childhood sexual abuse, prolonged. What? Um, and also, and also, what do you mean prolonged? Meaning, like there was there was three or four separate instances with three or four separate people. For you? Yeah. We didn't know that, dude. It's not. It, listen, well, yes, you did. I way. did not. Well, I, I didn't talk about it till I was like 30. Right? I know. I and then I told you. Of one. And I said, I you were like sexually we abused. Always... You had, and you went, oh, I was 13. I was a big boy. Yeah, that's how I talk. <laughs> and have you, heard listen, of, let me have you heard Emily about other episodes except the one? One. The, the one. I know all about it. Yeah. Well, I know that more than Paris Pooh, I feel. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was how I lost my virginity. So right, that, I mean, I think it has The other two or three we left out? Yeah, well, this either like way. Well, it's so, worthy of com- comic because I was going to finish the story about where the, I what those were. I don't know how, and, and, and admittedly I have uh, deviant sexual behavior in my past. I don't know how I didn't develop into someone who has criminally deviant sexual behavior. Because you've always I had, thank God, but no, I don't know how. You, it, you, always, you have a deep moral compass and you have empathy. Even when you were sort of out of it, you were still had the capacity to appreciate. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, fact, I, mean, I fact, still remember the, the girl I introduced of... myself to that I banged. That I, I mean, I still remember the look, the look on her face like it was yesterday. Well, it tell them like... what you're talking about. Yeah, everyone knows that story. Well, just paraphrase it. I was in Vegas. I was partying super hard, really hard. It was New Year's. I come down to eat breakfast one morning, and I introduce myself to this girl. And it turns out I'd banged her like 15 times in the last couple of days. And we're walking around Vegas, holding hands. We went on dates. And I was like, hey, nice to meet you. And she, the look on her face, when she realized I wasn't joking, was, it was hard. I mean, I, I, it's horrifying. It's like, it's like I've seen war. I mean, I was like, just even thinking about it. But, you know. we got to find her. Anyway. I didn't find her. <laughs> We're friends on Facebook. <laughs> You're friends on Facebook? Yeah. Well, oh, it's the best. It's the best. I'm, a, I'm a diff, literally a different human literally, being. Literally. I understand that. But, but he brings up an interesting point. He was sexually abused three times, and I'm assuming you're talking about repetition compulsion, right? How you found somebody to oblige yes. you. Yes. Yeah. The, the humans have this extraordinary. The, did you call it a tick today? Were we talking about this? I don't somebody think so. Somebody was talking to said it's almost like a tick. It's all, it's, and I think it's a biological wiring where if you have a horrible experience in childhood, you will find people and circumstances that will oblige you by reenacting it. You'll be literally attracted to them. Do you remember the two people you went back to that abused you? Were you sort of attracted to them in some weird yeah. way? And they will, of course, repeat the behavior, repeat the behavior. And somebody asked me today, well, why do we do that? Why does human do that? And I thought, I, it's hard to figure out the evolutionary. It was Ethan Berman. I was doing his show that we talked about this. And what's the evolutionary purpose of that? And I think, I think it has something to do with, first of all, there's probably a good version of it, right? We also probably repeat good things. Yeah. But I think there's a more interesting piece, which is, we have a tendency to ritualize trauma. I mean, what is Passover? But a repeat, we repeat every year exactly what happened. We drink salt water, we have parsley, we eat an egg, do exactly the same thing. And by the way, the story of that trauma, if we had told the story, it would have become some crazy myth. When you offload you reenact it, it yeah. if you reenact it the same way every year, 3,000 years later, people are still doing the same thing. 
<laughs> and it's kind of interesting, isn't it? So is it? Is that why... So you won't forget? Is that why? It's, it's a way, thing? it's an evolutionary adaptation so traumatized populations don't lose the memory. It's an offloaded memory, a ritual of exactly what happened so it doesn't happen again. Oh, that's so gross. What? I don't know. I just think about like how it's like as if trauma can can click on some switch like you're an animatronic Chuck E. Cheese character. And it's like <laughs> now that's what you live. And, and Do you feel like that? It, no, but... I remember every single time we talked to a battered woman on Loveline, that is exactly what I'd hear. I'd go, how can you not just leave? She's like, but you know, it, it, this is the last time it'll happen. It'll never happen but again. I love he him. says he loves me. Yeah. I, I love him. And, and you know, I can only imagine what trauma probably, whatever switch that was, watching your dad hit your mom or hit your dad. That's how you get in, but once you're in, it's a little more complicated getting out. It's a little more complicated. But what happened those other two times? I... You want, I, I you want to talk about sure, it? Well, no, not, not not because of me. It's because that situation is with people that I... How old were you? A grown man. Oh, I mean, oh, oh. Well, oh. I mean, you know, 17, 18 years old. Uh. You know, but I was a roided out 17, 18 it's because, years old. So. But also, we have to heal, right? Eventually, we have to heal our traumas, right? Because yes. they, otherwise, we, you know... Repeat them. We repress them, repeat them, repeat yeah. them. So maybe it's our survivalist way of saying like you can't forget that you have to act on this so it keeps happening yep. it we were set- until we deal until our life is unmanageable we were talking about like the the very it's- end of um, uh, when I, on my sober birthday it was like a month ago um you and i were talking about that time that how i eventually came to the end and i was talking about the dude who i did drugs with pretty much daily towards the end it was this gay guy and he he was wealthy. Uh, he had inherited money. Then he had money that he re- retired with. He was wildly wealthy. And was the only guy I knew in this part of Jersey. He was like th- literally the only person I knew. And he loved cocaine. And I loved being around him because he loved giving me cocaine. But he never once, right. like at all, tried. And I wonder if like subconsciously I was like wanting him to. No. You, you never want it. You just are attracted to it. And he evidently could have been that guy but he was enough of a human being and healed enough himself totally to not and if he, if he if he uh, any time has been like i got a good gram for you but yeah i i'm amazing get on your knees but, but like, okay the other, the other part that trauma does is it, blo- it it disintegrates part of our brain so parts of ourselves sort of lose connection with our consciousness and those parts are always there sort of looking for attention but you're not ever aware of it other questions um, is that your hand up no in a in a Those in a pinch, if you, we don't have another one, real quick. Yep. Do you yep. do you go ahead? I'm sorry, sir. Yep. Yep. Yes, they would still be attracted to, but they but they, we we always we when we treat sex addicts and people you know want to argue is sex addiction exists and all this stuff, but it's a Drew, what was the question? Oh, sorry. The, Thank you. Is, will, the, will you, if you go for, to treatment for your trauma, will you still be attracted to the bad, the, not the bad, the people that could be perpetrators? And you will be, you will be. Because like, like, just like um, the, you mentioned the f- father's an alcoholic, you're attracted to the alcoholic male, uh, you'll always find them attractive, but you won't necessarily go with it. It'd you'll be you'll like, understand it, what it is, you'll be able to read it, you'll know there's that mechanism again in me, and I know that we always teach the sex addicts, think, think butterflies, not lightning bolts. The, the lightning bolts are still kind of fun, but you know where that's going. It's so, like, mm-hmm. is it like, um, you, to use it, a very hackneyed analogy, instead of going on some crash diet and trying to deal with it, if you actually went to work on your impulses and eating, how you would be able to th- resist the cheesecake better more than someone yeah, it's better who just tried to fucking starve themselves? That's right. But more nourishment rather than being sort of extreme. Sure. Intense. Okay. Uh, uh, if in, real quick, I'm sure other people have questions, but you started off by saying we... It's just that we're now seeing it more and people are talking about it more. It's not happening with more occurrence. What? Trauma, sexual trauma. It is happening with a lot more. Okay. A lot more. For the very How reason we were talking about the kid in, in Riverside that got perpetrated on 50 other people. Right. It, how do it, we know, though? How do we know it's more? How do, how do you, don't, as a man of science, I, what I, leads you to believe that it isn't I, just the I, fact that we now have because a I, way less taboo to talk about it, also way more outlets to hear about it, it was Freud kept coming up on it. You know, it was around. It's always been around. It's always been talked about. But the the magnitude of it since the so called sexual revolution has is profound. Yeah. Is profound. And and you can just you can. It, it's a it's I, there's no way that it was as common any other period in history. Maybe in pre revolutionary France where there's all this evidence that kids were left in orphanages and were abused all the time, and that's just the way it was then. And now here we did it again here. You're always hearing like step parents and broken family, whatever. I mean, I don't even know what the nuclear family is anymore, but I think that's not a thing to do with it. Like we're just not. 
I wonder how safe. to create a healthy relationship to sex. Because, whoa, where are we going here? What are you talking about? For you Which personally? No, for- because there's, I think every time you try to engage in something that is looked at as a healthy sex, it's like it just suppresses it or it pretends like it doesn't exist. It- like how do you make it not taboo, not something that is, is weird or shameful in a household, but at the same time, don't aggrandize it or make it seem like it's something that shouldn't be taken seriously because far too often, especially with young boys, I don't know about you ladies, but certainly teenage boys, you don't look at sex as anything special. It's just a means to an end. You have to talk. I mean, the thing is just talking about it and not having the shame around it. Like when you, like when you have kids, like when you have kids, like a lot of parents, you guys probably don't do this, your progressive family, but you will be a little girl and they're like, oh, you know, here's your, here's your, you know, your neck, your stomach. And they do your little wee wee down to your thighs. It's, it's her, it's vagina. her bedima. It's her bedima in our household. Vagina. But she should say vagina. She this says bedima. So we just adopted it. We're like, yeah, you know, your bedima there. Yeah. Well, eventually Emily it might was, be nice Emily to Emily was telling me during there's depressed vaginas. They really? Depressed. Yeah. They, they my whole thing. Do you guys read about the depressed vaginas? My daughter was da- made hers dance today, so I don't think She's hers dancing is depressed. Vagina, not she yet. goes, Papa, my vagina Just dancing. Just wait. <laughs> like, yes, that's uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It could be like a like, like they say it's like well, vulvodynia, which a lot of women yeah, have, but they say like depressing. it can't be. It's, it's depressing, but they're yep. saying also you can't really. They don't really know what it's about. That it could be a psychosomatic. That women who are feeling depressed in other ways, they're not having sex. All the reasons that you think your vagina would be depressed. Does it frown? Always. Yeah, it frowns. It's like, you know, stays in bed, hungry, doesn't want anything inside. Okay, other questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's some weird chat. Other, other, any other comments or questions for you guys? Do you think over six million years of human history, everything on earth has been fucked by a dude? <laughs> Eventually. Right? Like every mountain tree. Some caveman's like... No, who took Johnny? It's a movie. Okay, what's it about? Oh boy, it's a good date film. It's a good. Uh, yeah, I've heard of stuff like that over the years. I, I have no direct knowledge of any of that. I well, Namble is real, right? Like, yeah, Namble is real. Nambla's a real and, thing. And, and I know that Adam, Adam wants to, Adam Corolla wanted to create a place called Pedophile. <laughs> Pedophile Isle. Pedophile. <laughs> and it turns out off, off, the, off of the, the coast of Seattle, there is a Pedophile Isle. So where they put the untreatable patients. But oh. I, I know there's weird little things like that going on. I'm sure, ugh. Who Took Johnny? That's what it's called. So pedophile rings. Ugh. It's it's yeah, I can't stand it. All right. Um, uh, okay. Question. Yes, where are you? Question. Way back there. Go ahead. Um, I know that you did the Elizabeth Smart. Yes, uh, Elizabeth Smart. I don't really have her feed and I really like to watch it more than the other three, just like little slices of it. Yeah. She asked for a summary synopsis and also some, some kind of parting about, messages about Elizabeth Smart. About someone who'd been trauma survivor like that? Well, um, there were two That's things. That ju- she, she was lovely, and she, you know, she was severely traumatized. Uh, the, the, you go to the bathroom? Yeah. Have fun. <laughs> the, 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 um, the, the, several of the interesting things jumped out at me about her. Was one was that when she was brought to the so-called camp by this guy that you know Elizabeth Smart was in Utah and she was uh, abducted from her bedroom at age fourteen, taken out and held at knife point, and then taken to some camp way out in the wilderness. And when she got there, there was a woman there, also s- s- crazy, super crazy. And um, when she when Elizabeth got to this camp, said, "Oh my God, here's a woman. She'll take care of me. She'll understand. She, will, you know, a woman will not allow a fourteen-year-old girl to be harmed." And this woman perpetrated and helped organize the perpetration that she suffered. And for her, that was such a violation as a woman. She, she almost has not been able to, she, she would call it hatred, although she has trouble saying that word. She has such hate for that woman, more so than the guy who was the guy that had sex with her three times a day for years and it starved her and, oh, just horrible things. For like six months, she was held in un- inhuman circumstances. 
I mean, literally having sex. He would, he would line the woman and Elizabeth side by side and go back and forth having sex with them. She would make her drink wine. She was a Mormon just to sort of screw with her. Uh-oh. Here's, uh, here's a... Uh, okay, uh, 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 uh. Hold, hold on. Hold on, Rudy. Rudy, hold on, buddy. Hold on, man. You all right? You look a little freaked out. Let me just finish. I'm talking about Elizabeth Smart. Do you know who that is? Elizabeth Smart? Yeah. That's Freddie Prince Jr.'s wife. And, and so she plays guard for the Raiders. So, so the, the other she thing she played bass for war. The other thing that she said is that she felt she was able to survive it because she had the she knew that I he, can hear my heartbeat, dude. Even though she was, she felt she'd been ruined and poisoned and, and spoiled and had all these horrible, shameful feelings about herself, the love of her family carried her through, and it was a very interesting sort of um, lesson for me that really that, that f- the feeling of, of, a, of a deep connection with their parents and a proper ability to regulate emotions and the hope and faith that that would be there when she returned was why she survived, bottom line. And the, when, she, when it came time to get treatment, she was put in a room with two psychiatrists who made her go through every detail of what happened and she felt it was so re-traumatizing. They were essentially trying to build the court case at that time that she just couldn't do it. She went back later, did get some treatment. I know a lot of people say she needed more or whatever. She's doing awfully well. She's married. She has two kids. And now she's trying to help other victims. So does that summarize it well for you? She's doing remarkably, remarkably well. I mean, could she do better? Probably. And there's probably things that she could you know, manage that might help her be a better parent or more emotionally available as a parent. But she's remarkable, really remarkable. Uh, all right, Rudy. Hey, anybody? Uh, hey, man, what's happening? I was just thinking for on, like, buddy? I was just thinking like, you know, stroking my mustache, looking at you talk, and I was thinking about your culo, how like tight. You like my culo? It's like uh, muscular. Yeah. You ever like uh, do asshole kegels? To... Asshole kegels? Did I use Emily's kegel camp to go to uh, asshole kegels? Emily taught me because like after like my last time in the pinta, like I was a little loose. I was a little yeah. loose, and yeah. like Emily showed me, I like a thigh master, but it's for your it's little. Yeah. And I put it in my culo, and I was like, ah, 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 ah. Well, she has a little. And now it's all little, like like a fucking Hershey's kiss, but it's pink. <laughs> oh, so the the shrimp went back in. Yeah, my shrimp, my prawn, prawn, like Freddy. It was like Freddy Krueger's fucking head. And then now it's like little, like nice. Be- it looks like a pencil eraser. So we, we say last time we were in the pen, things got a little loose. That's right. Fool. When was the last time you were in? 2005. 2005. And Trucho, was that with Trucho? That was, was that? my soulmate Trucha, and I let him fucking blast my asshole. <laughs> I let him just go balls deep. You know, we were, we've been talking a lot. There's tonight. nothing wrong with that, dog. You know? No, whatever you're into, man. Some of us are different. <laughs> I know, Rudy. You know, like, it, it, we just think differently and, like... Your hand's nice and soft, man. I that's right. Keels, dog. I use <laughs> Keels on my fucking hands, like, honey almond hand lotion salve. <clears throat> there was this old bitch, like, when I used to do uh, landscaping, there was this fucking old bitch that used to uh, hire me. In Beverly Hills? No, nah, San Marino. San Marino. <laughs> old white lady. And I wait for her to fucking leave to go to the country club. Yeah. And I blam, kick her door in, all the kills. I'd steal that shit. And I, I rub it, lather up my balls. It looked like. <laughs> oh, you dude. had a whole procedure for shaving your, your huevos, right? That's right, dog. <clears throat> <laughs> Shave them up clean. Listen, first, while you're, while you're like uh, dry. Well, first of all, Emily, is that important for a man to be clean like that? Yeah. With microphone. That, you know, per, case by case basis. You don't want to shave all the way. You got to leave a little hair so you're reminded that People you're a man. People can decide how much hair they want to have. So you're what? Yeah, you know, like, uh, like I comb it too. I put like, <laughs> and I fucking like comb it back like a pompadour. It looks like uh, my my dick looks like like Morrissey or like <laughs> like Bruno Mars. Dick Morrissey. That's right, Doc. No, you have gotta use hair conditioner. Yeah. But first, before you shave, and like let it sit in for maybe 30, 45 seconds. What kind of hair? Like heels again? Any type of hair conditioner, okay, Doc. Right. I mean, if you right. can't afford no heels, or if you don't happen to do landscaping for a rich bitch, <laughs> use okay. just any type of like uh, store bought hair conditioner. All right, put that on there first, and let it sit. You know why? Because it softens up the follicles, yeah. and it gets your. And then 
Then don't don't like start shaving. Go into the hot shower, mm-hmm. wash that shit out, and then when the, the the pores are all open, then you fucking mock fi- mock five. Don't you put a oh I say no no shaving cream though. Nah, like you don't need it at that point because it's all lubed and smooth. And, and it's good because everyone can see the Raiders helmets that you have tested. That's right. I got my balls are a Raiders helmet, dog. It's just an entire. What, what? What's going to happen now the Raiders have moved to Las Vegas? Can I say this out loud and have you be okay with me? What? Raiders are moving. Right? No, but where? Like, like they're moving stadiums? In yeah. Where? Las Vegas? Yeah. Oh, damn, dog. I'm afraid of you. I'm afraid what you might do. I'm just going to move to Las Vegas. Uh, that's, that's the only right. fucking <laughs> figure out a way. So, you got any more tattoos planned? Any more Raiders? Sort of? You got that one with the Dodgers, of course. Yeah, and then I have the one where my grandma, my abuelita, is a, a bird. <laughs> <laughs> my abuelita is a dove, but it's her face, and she's flying away. And then Jesus is jumping. Jesus, Jesus in a Dodger hat has a... Has a butterfly, has a butterfly net, and he's jumping, trying to catch my abuelita. Oh, that's a, where is that one? But we she's flying away, one. and it, it's just like a thought bubble. She's like, "Catch you later, fool." Thought bubble out of her, out of her, culo. Well, yeah, because she's a bird. Oh, right, right. She's right. flying so fast. Right, right. Uh, exciting season with the Dodgers this year. I've really talked, spoken to you about that. Damn dog, I'm still getting over it. Dog. I it know. was like, I got so excited, and then like I was on this high, and then yeah. it just like. You seem yeah. really like you're not high or anything. You're not drunk. I'm, I'm baked really out of my mind, dog. I stopped at my... F- <laughs> it's just you're so baked I all stopped, the time. I stopped at my friend Joker's house in Alhambra. And I Joker? Fucking, I got fucking blazed out of my dome. With Joker's pot. Yeah, and then we... You don't have to go to Joker's anymore. You can buy it in a weed shop now. You can go to... It's all going to be... No, he, I don't know where he got it. He just had it on hand for oh, me. He had this gigantic blunt. looked like a goddamn tampon. And I'm like... <laughs> shit. And how are the kids? Which one? Uh... Rudy My Jr. kids? Yeah. Oh, uh, they're good. Rudy Jr.? Uh, he's a manager at Red Lobster in El Sereno. Nice. That's good. It's dope. That's, it's good that's pretty dope. You that's know, good. Like, and uh, Sad Girl, she doing all right? You know, like, uh, she's starting to put the weight back on. Uh-oh. Because for a while there, you know, she uh, I got her on the best diet ever. You know, I was sprinkling the meth in her food, like, not telling, on the down low. Because she, uh, you know, I felt bad. I love my wife, Sad Girl, so much. Sing slow jams to her. <laughs> I fucking massage her. And then she was trying so hard she did La CrossFit and La the, CrossFit. Fucking, the fucking Jenny Craig. All that shit, dog. And no, like, nothing was working. So I was like, what can I do? And like, so I just started putting the scante in her food. And, and she was like eating up. And she'd get all tweaky. And next thing I know, she lost like 125 pounds, but she was taking apart all the shit in her house. And. <laughs> No, no, she's she she putting t- putting curtains up and looking out. She's like, they're coming for us, Rudy. No, she thought Kona, Who the fuck's coming for us? Dog? She thought Kona was talking to her. That's right, dog. Conan O'Brien. She's like, he's ta- he's inside the TV. I had to take it apart. I was like, fuck, bitch. That's the, the last TV grandma gave us that TV. Was that before or after she cut her leg off? I don't like to talk about her cutting her own leg off because she thought there were bugs in it. But <laughs> it's dope. She got like a she got like. A, a, a fiberglass oh. fucking pirate leg nice. and then and she just like gets sponsors Marinello School of Beauty it's all in that shit did she go to Marinello was she a- <laughs> no what I thought she was a, a nest a- she's a no that's what I she's alumni dog that's how her fucking eyebrows look so so dope all the time with the scrunchy the <laughs> what what'd you say fool Scrunchies what'd you say you white eyebrows? ass motherfucker With her scrunchy hair? With her scrunchy, scrunchy, scrunchy bunchy hair? All right, Rudy. All right, man. Are you, uh, you're doing well, though. You're loaded today, but... Emily, do you have any do you questions? Wanna, for- you wanna, hey. if, if I could break character for a second. Do you want to know how hard I had to try to try to grow a real mustache? And oh, forget How it. many times Drew and I had a conversation off the air? I was like, do you think it'll ever work out for me? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think it's a, but now I got this fucking majestic bro. It's beautiful, dude. Rudy, do you have any questions? Emily's here. You always liked Emily. Any questions for her? Hey, um, Emily, mm. I, feel, I got a real question. I'm here for you. I like to provide Baby. um the pleasure with my tongue, uh-huh. you know, for my wife, because I know that that's like uh, important. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But sometimes I feel like um, I can be too aggressive because I'm all charged up, you know, and I'm like a man. You know, I, I'm an Aztec warrior. Yes, you are. Mm. Yes, you are, really. So I, I feel like, you know, she's telling me because she loves me like, oh, it's good. But I feel like sometimes I might be going a, a little too hard in the paint, you know, like. You're probably going too fast. Should, is it better down. to just like Slow. To pump them brakes? My best sex advice ever. My top, if someone's like, give me one tip, it's to go five times slower. You're probably going way too fast. She didn't even know you were there. That's the thing with women and arousal. We're so different than men. Like, that's why it's so, all this stuff is so confusing, but it's like, we're not even turned on and you're down there doing stuff or you came in with a boner and we're like, I was just texting. I was finishing doing something. We're, sex is the last thing on our mind. All right. So I should slowly move towards her. Here's another question. Yeah. Rudy, like, does, Rudy, I'm like, you can get it from It doesn't apply to me now because my wife is so beautiful and fit. Uh-huh. But like in my past, and I'm sure like all the vatos out there listening have been there. But you go down there to provide the pleasure with your tongue, mm-hmm. and there's a little bit of fupa. There's like a <laughs> there's a panza, and it. What's do the, you do hey, you? Rudy, ad- Rudy, is the difference between fupa and a panza? Nah, <laughs> same thing. Yeah, panza's like, a big fupa. That's right. Like, oh, okay, got it. <laughs> like so. <laughs> And you like, is it better to pretend like it doesn't exist, <laughs> or is it nicer to, to like to, to like you know put it like a dog's belly, you know, it's kind of <laughs> push it back. Make love to all of from her. a good gu- from a girl's point of view. I know you ain't got no fupa because you're all thin, but what? No, I think honestly, like I thought, <laughs> typically men are not think. Hopefully, you're with someone. Because this is what women are worried about. We're like, if you're with, it, you're sitting there thinking about our food, then you've been with her too long. No, no, no. I love, like, guys, all like, women I'm are so beautiful. I'm so happy to be in. I'm not going, that labia, the left labia was longer than the right labia. Like, guys, The question that. is, yeah. is it better to just like, you know, power through? Or does a woman mind if you, if you like, I go think, ahead and like, do some action? I mean, get think, some turtle wax or some shit. Why you, I think you could, you know, case just, See how she feels. See how she reacts. Right. Forget the you turtle wax. Do. Not no so turtle much. wax. And it's a part of her, you know? Love that. Love the fupa. Love her lady. Rudy, are you still working at uh, Yamba, Yamba Juice? Juice? Yeah, come yeah. check me out. Yamba Juice. You're the, that uh, Kathy was grandma calls it Yamba Juice? Yeah, that's, I mean, my abuelita does the same thing. She does? Yeah, is she okay a, now? She was in a coma last time we talked. That's right. Well, not a coma as much as just like she was baked out of her mind. Oh. <laughs> and like, because uh, we were... We were watching the Raider game in her pad and hot boxing and shit. And next thing we know, we look over and we're like, oh, I think your grandma's dead. <laughs> and we just put my, lo- we put my fucking lokes on her. And we left her like, what are we going to do? Well, but then she came back like, we're like, oh, fuck. That's good. She's all good now, right? Check out uh, your grandma's like Jesus. She just came back. <laughs> all right, Rudy. Thank you for spending some time with you. Appreciate it. Well, no uh, problem, fool. What's going on up there? Oh, I want to show Mike some stuff. Is Mike around? Uh, let me get him. Okay. <laughs> Gary, can you help me show something to Mike? I, uh, Mike's been giving me endless crap about... I, I'm so sick of the roads here in Los Angeles. Uh, and uh, as my F you to the city government is... I want to fly in a... Fuck you! <laughs> you uh, In an Uber drone. Or some kind of drone. So Dr. Mike, Drew needs help every single day to work the phones at the radio station. And yeah, I'm going to trust you to fly an aircraft well, I, in the me, sky well, I want you to Phones look are us. hard. Phones oh, are hard. I tried those phones. You. I want you to look at some of them. I, I just think that the, the roads are such a mess in Los Angeles. These poor people that are suffering in the fires right now are, are just a great example of how we can't even handle an emergency in this town because our roads don't work even when there's not an emergency. We need to get to the skies. That's it, man. That's all I'm saying. I, no, no, no. It's crazy. Just play as tra- There we go. Listen to me. Watch. Listen. Watch. Watch. Behold. Behold. Can you see? I think so. It looks a little, it looks a little like, I don't know. I imagine something lighter weight and easier. Listen to me. What? They've got them in Dubai. It's happening. Oh, well, everything that happens in Dubai is something we should adopt. <laughs> well, this it's we fucking should. fucking insane. Listen to me. Yeah. As, cra- as horrible as traffic is. The way that we all seem to manage on the roads is amazing. Look. Just look. It, the fact that it's not Mad Max, it's not pure chaos. We have figured out a way to make it work for us. Why do you want to throw a wrench in the system 
we can go inches away from each other, 80 miles an hour on the 405, and somehow it's like... Same thing will happen. It'll, be, it'll all be Google-driven. Nope.com. Be, you cannot do look, that. Look, you know look, why? Behold. You can't put lanes in the sky. You, but it will all be driven by computers. We'll never run into each other. It'll be perfect. It'll be great. It'll be a, the future's upon us. I live in Venice. Yeah. Google. The Google South is in Venice. Uh-huh. Okay? I watched a fucking robot car crash into a wall. I watched it with my eyeballs. Testing. A bunch of dudes named Pishtar and Hindai come out and they're like, we've been working on this for three years. It's amazing. We're at the top of the field. Boom! Right into the side of Gold's Gym. So fuck you and fuck your computers driving. It's amazing. We finally got into it. And yes, traffic sucks. Okay? Look at that. Come on now. That's the future. That is the future. Okay, and we just we just magically have a bunch of places to land. Look, look, it's on the road. Just man, and I under- listen to me, listen to me, yeah. fucking asshole, bawling out of control, <laughs> living on a compound. Not everyone's gonna be like, oh yes, let me have this. Let me go out into my backyard that's a field and just get my fucking drone and then land at work. I mean, Jesus Christ, what happens if you work at the AT and T store? You're just gonna fucking. <laughs> I'm coming in for a landing. You dick! You fucking pretentious okay. cocksucker! Okay, well, I'm just saying. I, I'd like to look to the future. That's all I'm saying. Emily, you with like, me on this? Thank I hate you. driving. I would do any of this. I don't care. Driving is not. I you don't know do how I of drive this. too. Fantastic! Thanks for the support. Yeah, they, they have Blade. They have what? Blade. It's it's like Uber for helicopters for like a zillion dollars. It's or, ridiculously oh, expensive. Yeah. But do you expect that your 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 robot chauffeur to be cheap? I think it's gonna be safe and cheap. Yes, yes. I do. I do. I do. It's my fantasy. No, you don't think Does so. Does anybody? Do... Anybody enjoy driving? Yes, I do. Okay. On, on roads that work, on real roads. Yeah. All right. Listen. Hey, last questions. Here we go. We're gonna finish this thing up. Where are you? Yes, sir. Go ahead. First off, you guys live. Um, you live more. Yeah. You live. What was your guys' most memorable open forum? Uh, for Love Line. Mexican superstitions. Oh. It's the best. Shit's the best. It never gets old. No. Such as? Oh, wait. Oh, no. No. Oh, like, yeah, no. Like... Mexican superstitions is the best, like, for pure fun. But the most fascinating one was... Celebrity? Sh- the was shit you did... To and, uh, to, No. To, did you lied to your partner about... Things you did instead yeah. of just breaking up. And, like, five people faked right. their death. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And of, dudes are like, oh, I'm, I joined the Marines. I'm going to war. They were lying. Yeah. I'm like, you really? That you? What? And we don't know how to communicate. There's the just a communication breakdown between men and women. That's the real problem. Yes? Celebrity sexual so, encounters. Uh, celebrity sex stories are awesome. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm just getting excited <laughs> thinking about it. It was fun. We it was amazing. Like, what are you talking about? It's a great one. That, I'm Michael Caine. Michael Caine banged a hooker at Tommy's. Not hooker. Just some kid. No, she. she was Craigslist. A, Oh, okay. You're right. Thank You're you. right. I'm sorry. It was like yeah, at but Chuck E. Cheese. No, no, at Tommy's, Tommy's. Oh. in Eagle Rock. Oh, okay. And motherfucker pulls Royce. up Somebody in a Rolls Royce to Tommy's and just bangs it out in the parking lot. And he's like, "I'm Michael Caine. Thank you." <laughs> Didn't she say they had the door open? If they, fought? I'm Alfred in Batman. That was great. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I want to thank. Oh, is there a question? Go ahead. Yes, all three triplets. Yeah. Repeat the question. Oh, I, so did you did, did you put that on Twitter? Because somebody t- t- tweeted about that today. Um, no, no. What I said was I, I went to Amherst College. One of my sons went to Amherst College, and it's a super progressive you know place. And it usually is like a couple years ahead of everybody in terms of what starts to happen in the country. We start having that stuff socially before it gets hits the, you know, the rest of us. Wor- worse it, than Berkeley? Yeah, just it's it's not not in the kind of activism in the sense of the social structure okay. and what right. they're thinking about. Like I remember the first time I heard of apartheid was on my campus. So it was 1970 whatever, and I was like, "Well, this is interesting. What's this? I've never heard of it." And then we were demonstrating, only place in the country that was demonstrating about it. But but. He was saying to me that he was fearful to interact in any way with women, especially if they were holding wow. a beer or they'd, he'd had a drink. Through. Impossible. Would not even talk. So it, any interaction was fraught with wow. misinterpret. Could be misinterpreted. I'll just forget it. I'm just not even going to. 
just time you do. And that's one of the untoward effects of the harassment right. issues. People are avoiding each other. People in positions of authority aren't getting to know, say a male isn't getting to know women, who he could moving up because he's not able to spend time alone and getting to know them. So there's, there's some untoward consequences. Yeah, and we're we still in it, though. That's the yeah. thing. Is like I've been, my brain's going like, how can I get in my podcast and talk about blowjobs when we're, yeah, all this sure. stuff going on in the world? We need to solve it. But how, we're still in it. We're how do to, you... I will still talk about blowjobs and oral sex. Yeah, it's porn. fantastic. It how, is. How do pleasure, you? That's what I'm saying. I want to bring back the pleasurable part of sex. Well, no, how do, the, how do we usher in an entirely new way of men treating women in this country without completely suppressing men's desire to even be around women like it sounds like some college it, 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 I think it, there needs to be understanding it of, needs to of get men. worked through I mean that was like part of the behavioral. working through process that was then and now we're all dealing with and thinking yeah, about it we're all in it together it, should, it should be but it should be based in awareness not fear you understand yeah, what I'm yes. saying like the idea well, no, of the next of fear, no a little bit of fear is going to be necessary to keep it top of mind you're not going to be thinking well, about it. It's a civil, little bit fear. Was the civil rights movement in any way about fear? No, it was just about a completely. Eventually, there this was a progression it was, yeah. of it. It wasn't as if they're like, well, if we let them go to school with us, yeah. I mean, I'm just scared to be around them. All it, right, last questions. Yep, back here. Santa Rudy theme song. I forgot the Santa Rudy theme song. Santa. Oh, it's like Santa Baby, right? Santa oh, Rudy. Fuck, I'll sing it. Santa. A little acapella. All right, we'll sing on the way out. Right. The, the, <laughs> okay, that gentleman, that gentleman said, "I want to let Emily know I have a couch for sale because Emily is so amazing. She let us know that she put up a, po- a post to sell a couch on eBay or on Craigslist, Craigslist, and then banged the dude when he got there." That is not true. But I went on a date with sale. him and then I banged him. Last question on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> not that it matters. Wait, hold on, Emily. Hold on. <laughs> Your pre- oh. Yeah. Yes. 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 It's going to go back up. Uh, your third trimester, I hope you're independent women. Third trimester is going to go through the roof, and then the first year is going to go back down again. And that's when you've got to be a father and a, and a husband, and you know that's going to be your priority. Is but, that your boyfriend right there? Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations. Congratulations to you. I will say this, and I'm not just trying to, to support your boyfriend and make him look cool. Be so thankful that your situation is going in that direction because far too often dudes get a girl pregnant and then he, they become an, an, a weird anathema because they're like – become you, this fragile for... baby maker instead yeah. of a woman. Yeah. And so the fact that he now has had his libido increase – it's a very good sign. It's a good and sign you for should, you and your you know. relationship. And, so. intimacy st- and intimacy is still important if you're not actually having sex – you know, cuddling, holding hands, giving him a hand job, whatever. So we're going to wrap this up. We're going to wrap this up. We're, we're going to last question. Right? Go ahead, real yeah. quick. Go ahead. Rube. No, she was just a friend of my cousin's. Yeah. Repeat the question. Yeah, I'm not. She's not in my life at so all. The question is: Is the friend of the cousin still in your life? No, no, not at all. Is this, nice. I doubt it. Is the cousin still the cousin still around? Yeah, she's still alive. I mean, she she moved somewhere else. But you wouldn't. Yeah, you don't have. You never. Does she know this happened? The cousin. Yeah. yeah. She wants you to lay down. We're gonna do a little therapy. Session. No, we're no, gonna no, get no. going. We're gonna wrap this thing up. We thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you for supporting KBC. Yes, Thanks thank you. Coming out to see us. We appreciate you guys being here very much. We're gonna hang out afterwards, and, and talk, take pictures, whatever. And Rudy's gonna sing us out. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Santa Rudy, I want you to get me fucking presents and shit, and I hope it's dope. I hope I get tres flores for my fucking luxurious hair, and maybe a hairnet for my wife when she cooks me chorizo, because her fucking pube black hair is always in my food. <laughs> and then buy me some fucking new Nintendo games, because I'm getting tired of playing Zelda with my kids. Even when I'm big, that shit gets boring. And... How come Santa has that dope ass beard and he doesn't ever fucking get sweaty when he comes down chimneys? <laughs> okay, Rudy, thank you. Thank you, Emily. Sex Emily, check her out there. Check us out at KBC Seven Night. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Remember, you can find all these podcasts at drdrew.com. The Dr. Drew Podcast, the This Life Podcast, and the Adam and Drew Podcast, which is available five days a week. Find them all on iTunes and rate us five stars. Subscribe and get it first. 
And if you're really happy, click on the Amazon banner at drdrew.com to help support the show. We'll thank you for it. If you join the email list via drdrew.com slash contact, we'll send you a weekly infusion newsletter with Dr. Drew's news. We're so grateful when you get in touch. We read all your emails and we'll bring you the subject matter you want to hear about. You live.